in terms of our session today, we're going to look, first of all, at the legal framework and key concepts of data protection law in the UK. Um, and then I'm going to pass over to Lowry, who's going to look at some of the specific compliance requirements in the context of the workplace, in particular, issues in using consent as a lawful basis for processing um, in relation to employees, staff privacy notices, uh, data subject rights like the right of access um, and the right to object to processing, uh, medical and health information and how this should be lawfully processed, as well as looking at employee monitoring and the relatively thorny issue of data retention. We are increasingly seeing data protection compliance issues being used by employees and former employees as tools in disputes against employers. Uh, using subject access requests to obtain information from employers is not new, but we're increasingly seeing DSARs being used as a matter of course in situations like disciplinary cases or grievances, um, and in particular in relation to prospective or actual employment tribunal claims. We're also seeing compliance failures being used by employees as examples of detriments, uh, for example, failing to provide adequate information in response to a subject access request as being a detriment in the context of a whistleblowing claim or victimisation claim under uh, discrimination law provisions. The first issue I want to take a look at today is the problem with consent in the employment context. Now, the GDPR sets the high standard for consent. The definition is set out on the slide here. And essentially, for consent to be GDPR compliant, it needs to be freely given, specific, informed, and there needs to be an unambiguous indication of the data subject's wishes, where they signify by clear affirmative action agreement to the processing. So you can see that there are quite a few elements that need to be considered. Some of the key features of this new higher standard of consent under the GDPR and which are covered by the ICO and their guidance on consent are that consent needs to be unbundled. And by that we mean that consent requests must be separate from other terms and conditions and consent should not be a precondition to something. 